So we're now going to move from lists onto tuples. So tuples in many ways look like they're very similar to lists. So like lists, they're storing a sequence of values, and you can index and, um, into them, and you can um, ask which um, item comes next. Um, the big difference is that tuples are what's known as immutable, meaning that once you've created them, you can't change them. So that means you can't remove elements, and you can't change elements, which is different from what happens with lists. Um, and again, tuples come with um, some of the same methods as lists, such as index, um, and you can also use in to ask whether a value is in a tuple. So um, we've kind of also mentioned the main reason why we have tuples, and that is that um, a tuple, unlike a list, is hashable, which means that you can use it as a key to a dictionary. It also crops up kind of without you really realizing it. Um, when you're dealing with Python, um, so for example, when you call a, um, a function from Python that returns multiple values, it's technically returning a tuple. Um, so Python tends to create tuples for you automatically. So you might not always be um, aware you've got a tuple there, but they'll often be there in the background. So the syntax to create them is a bit like lists, except rather than square brackets, it's just round brackets. Um, and again, you can index into it and say, what's the first element of this, and so on. Uh, and you can say, is this element in this uh, tuple? And it'll say, yes, it is. Um, and you can also ask what length a tuple is. Um, you can use count, which will tell you how many times a certain value appears in the tuple. That also works for lists, incidentally. And like lists, there's an index. The only thing which tries to change the tuple, however, will give you an error. So, for example, appending, um, you can't append because it says a tuple doesn't know how to append. Um, you can't delete because tuples don't support deleting things. Um, and you can't change the value either. So as I said, one place where Python creates tuples for you automatically is when you're passing a variable number of arguments to a function or returning more than one uh, value from a function. So you want to see unit three of the functions videos for more details about how this works. But just here's an example. If you've watched uh, the, that unit, then you'll recognize what's going on here. Um, so I've created a function that has a variable number of arguments, uh, and it just simply prints out what type of value that um, args is. And we also got one here which returns two numbers. And again, we can ask it what value are we returning. Um, and so you can see that when we call the variable args function, um, it tells us that um, the variable args or the parameter args has a value which is a tuple, and it's one, two, true, and three, which is, in other words, is the arguments we passed. And if we call our two numbers function and ask what type is it returning, you'll see it's returning a tuple. So tuples are sort of there in the background, even if you're not always aware of them. The final one I want to include in here is a, a concept of the set. Um, so this again is used to store a collection of values, but this time they're unique values, meaning that a value only appears in a set once. So here you want to think back to probably primary school maths and thinking about Venn diagrams. So sets don't order their values. You can't say what's the first value in a set, what's the second value in a set, what's the third value in a set. Um, However, they are mutable, meaning you can add elements and remove elements from sets. And you can also ask whether a certain value is inside a set. And of course, again, thinking back to primary school maths and Venn diagrams, you'll have been used to thinking about the intersection of a set and the union of a set. And this you can do with the bitwise operators in Python. So here we create um, two sets. So I've created one which is multiples of two, and the other one of which is multiples of three. Um, so we can first of all do the obvious thing, it is 4 in the set of 2's, yes. Um, and we can add um, another member to the 2's set, so I can add 22. Um, and I can also use update. So add is a bit like appending, and update is a bit like extending, but for sets. So after I've updated the 3's set, you can see it now contains those extra multiples of 3. So, um, because numbers only appear in a set once, if you try uh, adding a value in more than once, it has no effect. 
So if in twos I try and update it with a bunch of values which already exist there, then what I get is still just a single set of values um, with each number appearing only once. So the bitwise and opera operator, which is the ampersand sign, um, returns the um, union of the two sets. Um, well, the bit, uh, sorry, well, it turns the intersection of the two sets. So it, uh, the way to read that is, are the give me the members of the of set A that are also in set B, and the or operator returns the union. So it says, give me the values of the of the set A, and also all the values of the set B. And then finally, the exclusive or operator is asking you to return things that are um, in one set or the other set, but not in both. So again, we can see this operating with um, our um, sets of twos and threes. So if we say twos and threes, we're saying, give me the numbers which are in both twos and threes. Um, but, um, and then that therefore is the things which are multiples of two and three. So 6, 12, 18, 24 and 30. Whereas twos or threes is the set of numbers that are in at least one of the twos set and the threes set. So that's all the numbers we have stuck together. Although again, because it's a set, you'll see that each number only appears once, even though things like 6, 12, 18, 24 and 30 are in both twos and threes, they only appear in the result only once. And then twos exclusive or threes is the numbers that are in twos but not in threes, or in threes but not in twos. Um, and so that should be the difference between uh, the twos or threes and the twos and threes. Um, and you'll see that's what we get. So going on further from that, well, um, if one studies computer science, you find it's actually replete with lots of very, very complicated structures, um, far more than we're going to cover in these examples and well beyond the scope of this course. So you can do uh, linked lists and various trees and complex networks to organize data. Um, so one of the great things with Python is there's a whole bunch of third party libraries and packages that you can use that implement all of these clever data structures. And generally speaking, if you find you need to go and use a a complicated data structure like a tree or a, or a graph or something like that, there's almost certainly a package already out there that implements all that and you can just get on and use it. Um, but in this tutorial what we've been doing is mainly just trying to um, cover some of the basic data structures and, and indicate the ways we can use um, Python to build together um, some of the um, some of these data structures. For scientific computing um, there's one very important data structure that we're going to cover in a lot, and that's the array. Um, and so we'll cover more about arrays as we start the um, tutorials on the NumPy module. Um, so that is something to go and look forward to um, uh, as a future bit of uh, study for you. So in summary, um, we've covered, in the first part, we talked extensively about dictionaries, so storing data by name rather than their position. And in the second part, we've covered some of the other collections can be found in Python, specifically the lists, the tuples and sets, with a little diversion into strings.